Ah, yeah, this is a continuation of this Bendix compass coupler, which was used in a Boeing 707. I have done the reverse engineering of the electronic modules. So first this one, so this is the power supply, so there is nothing special. The schematic is here, so there is one transformer here, the big one, this one here. Uh, so this transformer generates various voltages, first the DC voltage which is used for the various electronic modules. And there is here a voltage of 26 volts AC using this RC network. So there is a phase shift between this signal and the other one. This signal is available on the rear connector. I don't know the purpose of that signal. There is also a voltage of 46 volts AC here. Actually, there are two voltages of 46 volts AC, 92 volts between these two points. And there is a voltage of 27 volts AC. And there is another transformer, a small one, which delivers a voltage of approximately 3 volts RMS. This voltage is used for the slaving amplifier. And there is another auto transformer here which delivers a voltage of 23 volts so I think this is the power supply for the flux detector the next module is this one so this is the module of the second device I received two days ago by the way it is in much better condition than the first one so this module permits actually to convert the 800 Hz signal of the flux detector into a 400 Hz signal which will be fed to the input of one servo control amplifier. So actually the input of the device is the output of the final synchro transformer. It is this one here. So the shaft of the synchro transformer is slaved to the flux detector. So I have found also the pinout of the synchro transformer. So this gives the input for the flux detector. Let's see in details the schematics of the slaving amplifier, which is the main circuit of that device. This is the complete schematic of the slaving amplifier. The input of the amplifier is here. The input is fed to this transformer, this uh, shielded transformer here. So this permits to increase the sensitivity. The input is connected to the rotor of the slaving control transformer. Okay, so the shaft of this control transformer will be slaved to the flux detector. The flux detector is connected to the stator of this slaving control transformer. Okay, I have drew this flux detector here. The output here is a signal at 800 Hz. We can see that there is a capacitor in parallel, so this is a common technique. I have seen this capacitor present every time in a compass coupler or compass computer, whatever it is called. So this capacitor is specific to the slaving control transformer because the resonant frequency should be closed to 800 Hz. So this permits to increase the sensitivity and to get only the second harmonic of 800 Hz. So this signal is fed to a first pre-amplifier here. So this is a classic amplifier using uh, this transistor here. But we can see something interesting in these two capacitors. The AC voltage present on the emitter is the same than the AC voltage on the base. So this AC voltage is fed to the intermediate points here. Okay, of these two resistors. So that means that the AC voltage across these two resistors, this one and this one, is, is closed to zero. So that means that the AC current which flows to the input here is the best current of this transistor. The input resistance of that circuit is the emitter resistance multiplied by the current gain of this transistor, approximately 100. So the input resistance here is approximately 400 or 500 kilo ohms. If these capacitors are not present, the input resistance would be these two resistors in series in parallel to these two resistors in series, so approximately 10 kilo ohms. So we can see that these two capacitors permit to increase the input resistance. This technique is called the bootstrapping. In the middle, there is the most important part of that schematic. This circuit is very simple and clever. So on pin 14 here, there is a reference signal of 400 Hz, which was actually the voltage here. So we can see that this voltage is fed to these two points here. So on that point and on that point, there is the sum of the 800 Hz signal and the 400 Hz signal. So these diodes permit to keep 
only a part of that signal at the output here there will be a pulse which corresponds to half a period of the 800 hertz signal so depending on the phase between the reference signal here and the phase of the 800 hertz signal there will be a positive or a negative pulse on these two points here this capacitor permits to have resonant frequency so at the output here there will be actually something which is at 400 hertz and the phase of that signal depends actually on the phase of the 800 hertz signal the output here is amplified using this amplifier made with this transistor the gain is 30 the gain is the ratio between these two resistors 39 kilo ohms and 1.3 kilo ohms okay this resistor is short circuited in ac so this resistor is used only for the dc bias on that module there is also an amplifier here so i don't know for the moment the use of this amplifier i didn't try to find where these two points are connected so i have prepared a setup in order to test that circuit this is the test setup the input of the amplifier here is connected to a synchro transmitter this is this one i have connected the one coil of the stator to a 800 hertz signal which comes from the function generator with a dual output the right output is set to 800 hertz and the left output is set to 400 hertz so the first output 400 hertz is fed to the reference signal here the voltage is 3.5 volts rms okay so the input signal is in blue here the bottom trace here in red it represents actually the output here and the two middle traces yellow and green are actually the voltage on the primary of this transformer this signal and this one so you can see that i can change the phase of the input signal by changing the position of the shaft of the synchro transmitter so we can see that the phase of the output signal changes effectively according to the phase of the input signal the output signal is not a signed signal but it doesn't matter to drive an ac motor and we can see the signals on the two primaries of this transformer here if i connect the output to an ac motor with an amplifier of course the motor will rotate in one direction or in another one depending on the phase of the 800 hertz input signal here so it is what we want this circuit is clever it uses only three transistors two transistors exactly for this leaving amplifier there is another one which is used for something else i don't know what at that time and the complete device uses only seven transistors to do everything it is quite impressive so now let's see the servo control amplifier we can see on the screen the schematic diagram of this servo control amplifier using two saturable reactors here the input is here so there is the first stage using this transistor to n 335 there is a driver stage the input is controlled by this transformer this is this small transformer there is also a power supply transformer this is this transformer here and the input voltage comes from the power supply this is the voltage of 92 volts rms so we can see on the secondary there are two diodes we can see in order to have a DC current flowing through this coil we need here a positive alternance at, and at the same time we need here a conduction of this transistor and the conduction of this transistor appears for a given alternance of the input so for a given input alternance we will have either a current flowing through this coil or through the other one when the input voltage is nul in that case there is a dc bias current which flows through these two coils here this bias current permits to increase the sensitivity the current bias is set in order to be just below the saturation of these saturable reactors you can see that when there is a current flowing through l1 these two coils will be saturated the current path will be like that otherwise the current will flow in the other direction the output here is totally floating the command winding of the motor is connected between these two points here and between one and two 
Vous avez the power supply voltage for the motor. This is the test setup for this magnetic servo control amplifier. I have connected the output here to this motor. The power supply here is 26 volts AC. The input is connected to the synchro transmitter, this one. The primary here is connected to an AC voltage of 92 volts. And we can see that this thing works. Okay, you can see that I can change the direction of rotation using the synchro transmitter. What we can do is to measure the output voltage here because the DCR of these inductors is 10 ohms so there is a voltage drop depending on the current here output voltage is between pin 3 and 4 ok the voltage is 7 volts ok so with uh, 26 volts approximately I think there is uh, 24 volts actually the voltage is 7 volts here so there is effectively a voltage drop so we should have enough voltage here in order to take into account the voltage drop across the saturable inductors here otherwise I think it is better to use an AC motor with higher voltage for example 115 volts in order to have lower current and lower voltage drop but anyway it works and the gain is quite high because it is difficult to stop the motor That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.